thank you for giving me the floor. We will continue in French. And my presentation is in English. I'll be rapidly presenting the situation of cholera in DRC. So for DRC, as you've seen, we are the second largest in terms of surface area in Africa with a population of 117 million and 17% live in the priority areas for cholera. These 20 million, so 20 million inhabitants are in a risk area for cholera. The situation in terms of cases now, if you look, I'm not sure if I can find a pointer here to show you. Here in week 25, we were at minus 94 below 94 for the whole country and the situation degenerated with the arrival of the outbreak in week 40 and then the war broke out in week 44 of 2022. And that's when the North Kivu started with, there were 500,000 displaced uh, persons and we organized a reactive vaccination campaign. This brought it down, you can see here, with the community interventions. But then the second arrival of refugees around the lake, the first were in Mirabungu, and the second group set up around the lake. And this is where we had another peak that led to over 2,000 cases. And here we had to reorganize ourselves to respond to this situation. In 2023, if you look at the South Kivu, there was another outbreak in the South Kivu province. And recently we had another health zone that is suffering from an outbreak as well. So if you look at only North Kivu, you already, you have about 51% of the cases over the 12 months. So if we hadn't had this situation, we would be in a normal, if, if I can say that, normal epidemic situation for the country. Now, with respect, we have a confirmation rate close to 40% with over 27% of the samples that were collected for culture. So RDC, in terms of strategy, with all of these cases, what is key for us is rapid response, rapid detection and rapid response to the cases. Otherwise, we would be in a situation that would be catastrophic. This. is this shows that we had a rapid control of these outbreaks, but in North Kivu, there were water shortages, which meant we, we couldn't cover all the wash needs for the displaced uh, refugees in the camps. And this is why the outbreak continues in North Kivu. You saw a lot of things that we showed you yesterday, a lot of projects that are be, being carried out that contribute to our in-depth analysis as well. With respect to the number of cases, we have anticipatory projects. And thanks to these projects, we've succeeded in responding rapidly to the different outbreaks. Now, multi-sectoral preparation is in place at the national and provincial level. We have the governor, government of the provinces that organize the response whenever there's an outbreak. And in a normal period, the 
administration's report to the national government. At the national level, every week we have a coordination meeting with all of the actors involved in the fight to coordinate our interventions. We have now finalized our multi-sectoral plan and hopefully our NCP will be validated in July. We also developed a communication and advocacy strategy. There's also a response plan for each province. This means that these provinces with endemic cholera each have their own response plan. We also have the OCV, preventative OCV plan. And we are currently responding to the feedback to respond before July 18th. And here we hope to receive 40, 40 million doses. We need to accelerate the production because in 2024, we have provinces that will have spent already three years without vaccines. And so this will mean that epidemics may return. Now, in terms of the strategy for the entire country, we do have a holistic dashboard, which allows us to do in-depth analysis. Here, we're working in the framework of these in-depth investigations to see for each cholera case, we need to go deeper and look at the problem in an integrated fashion. Is it the wash, wash that's a problem? Are there other cases? Are there measles cases? So we try to look at an integrated, have an integrated view of each cholera case. This is what we mean by integrated analysis at the community level. Now, what are our challenges? First of all, as we said, mobilizing government resources, especially domestic resources. And we're trying to see how to align our plan in the state budget and also reinforce coordination. Here the idea is to have indicators for each sector and each sector should be able to report on these indicators up to the national level. For health, we now have data from the lowest level up to the national level, but in the other sectors, we need to help them organize themselves in the same way. What are our priorities for the next year? Here, you see that our priorities are first of all, to do this dissemination of our plan, reinforce the mobilization of resources, preventive vaccinations. Is one of our priority, but we need to, 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 to apply for uh, LDTA2. And uh, uh, the, the last one is uh, how we can help to set up the, the lab in Tanganyika and uh, Oloman. We have five hotspot provinces, but we have only two labs in uh, provinces level. That our priority now is how we can string laboratory activity and uh, the monitoring of water. I want to tell it in English to, to uh, underline that priority for uh, DRC. We need more about laboratory. Thank you for your attention.